back to another one of Benson Valley's railway. Um, previous uh, videos have been mainly about my Arduino and JMOI communications using the CMOI library um, and working on the turnouts. And this will probably be my last one on the turnouts because they're pretty much set up now. Um, so I'm going to go over what I've got done and finished, how I've set up the turnout and how I've used the relays to power the live frogs within the Arduino code. One thing to bring up just before I go into this part of the video is a comment brought up on one of my um, previous videos by Huey and Wolf, um, which is quite an important comment. And he was saying about when you download the new JMOI, the um, additional connection communication, which is this bit here, is sometimes set up at a higher bit rate um, than what your Arduino is set to communicate at. So in your Arduino, we set up the serial communication as 9600 and, and this can be set up as the 115 there as a standard setup on some of the JMI setups if you're unlucky and if you don't tick that box to bring this up you'll have no communication between JMI and Arduino um, and you'll probably be pulling your air out so it's a nice one Huey and Wolf for bringing this up um, this is very very important part um, because you'll be struggling big time otherwise so make sure you tick the box, put it down to 9600. Um, I'll be making a sort of a, a tip guide on my website soon um, and putting all these little comments on because there, there's guys out there, he's brought up quite a few other things as well. If you read one of his, some of the comments, um, you can see it up there in, in the um, screenshot. Um, and so I'll get a few of these comments and they're quite good. So they're worth having it all in one place and I'll try and get it on my website. So thanks, thanks mate. Um, that's quite a good one for everyone to know. Right, I'll just save this and show you what I'm going to be doing today. So I just thought I'd go, quickly go over the, what I've got on my layout so far. Um, Wiring is a bit of a mess, it's something that needs to be sorted out because this uh, caddy goes in and out. Um, some of the wires are a bit short to go around the back, which I've made a mistake on. Bit of a pain, the wiring side of it. But either way, um, is my Mega that's set up and glued to the top. This runs everything so far. I'm not had to add an additional Arduino yet but I'm still early stages. And at the back there is my TTL to RS485 module, which is connecting then these two wires, which go around the room, because my computer's on the other side of the room, not on this side, um, which controls all this. Um, a relay bank, which you can pick up from eBay, quite cheap. This is a 16-way relay bank, and this is controlling, gonna be what I'm gonna be setting up today. Um, and this will be controlling the, the live frogs on the turnouts, um, which are all connected up, daisy-chained here. Um, to a 5 volt power supply for my computer power supply um, as you know that's all down there here's my computer power supply that gets my 12 and 5 volts um, and so that then connects individually out one one relay per turn out to give the power supply for the frogs um, these here is the PCA 9685 which was recommended for me to look into by Eric which is a comment on my website thanks Eric because this makes a lot of sense really it's only two wires communication then to the arduino um, which means i have less pins being used up in the arduino and i can use them pins for other think projects that i might not decide to do and this controls will control all my turnouts because i don't need much more than one of these but if you do as you've seen from my previous videos these can be daisy chained i can't remember how many i think it's about five or six or no i think it's more than that but um yeah you can daisy chain these off and have hundreds of um, servos gain on just the two wires from the Arduino so there's no need to fill up your Arduino really so that's that side for the electronic side and then over here is my turnouts um, I'm going to be setting up this one here today um, the others have been set up and I'll be going over how I set up um, sorry not setting up this one today I'll be setting up one of these ones over here today um, I've already set this one up and, and I've set this one up over the back here and these have to be um, turned at the same time because they go across this uh, crossover and this crossover has got live um, frogs as well so I'm going to go over the fact that this when this one turns on and the live frog becomes live in this it has to turn on one of the frogs in this one and vice versa the other one and they both have to operate at the same time to prevent any shorts um, the reason why I'm doing the live frogs to um, a relay by Arduino because you don't really have to, according to the Pico write up, because what normally happens is when these turnouts, I'll just disconnect one over here. I'll 
I'll just take this off. So when the turn that turns over like it has done here, um, these blades, which are th this part here, um, makes a physical connection to this running rail here, which is then picking up the electrical connection to liven up this part and liven up the fog down here, um, which works fine on some parts of them, but if you get a dirty connection, or if what I've had before where the I'm coming closer where the turnout's just coming off by that millimetre. You can see there, hopefully, in the camera. Um, it doesn't make an electrical connection, and then you lose continuity of electrical throughout the turnout. So that's that's a bit of a problem. So I decided then to use the um, relays to power these up. And these live frogs come with this little bit of metal, um, which you can electrically connect onto, and that is connected to that live frog. Right, just to add on to the, the bit I was saying about the live um, frog and the installation, the cutting of this part up here, which I used to have to do, I didn't realise, because I've just got my new one, that actually um, Pico have put in an insulator here. Um, hopefully it's coming in focus, but it's a, ni a nice little bit of plastic here, it's an insulator. And if you look at the back, they've put a piece of wire that goes across that insulator to liven up the live frog, which means all you've got to do really is to take that piece of wire out, which will then isolate the fog element or anything this side from your blade section up here. Which means that when you're liven up this side with your um, with your relay, which I'm gonna be doing in a minute, um, this side is not gonna be affected by it. This side still gets its power from where the fish plate connect up the top here. And then additionally, they've also given you a nice cut out here which is between the running rails on the outer side and the fish plates, um, the bits that don't move, the static part, this part here, which would be the opposite side of the installation, um, they give you that bit so you could solder a wire across both of them to means that you'll have a permanent feed on the fish, uh, these metal blades of the correct polarity. If this side where my thumb is is positive, this blade would always be positive no matter what way around this um, is in what position this is in and vice versa um, so the whole lot would work really well right so one of the first things <clears throat> I'm going to go over which I've done before um, so you can skip this part if you know how to do this is just setting up the uh, maximum minimum um, perimeters or turning points of the servo um, which is this servo over here on the right and the figures I'm going to be putting in here to find out the maximum it can go to and the minimum it can go to now I've already done this before and as you can see I've commented up here of what my servos can do. Um, the minimum is going to be 100 and my maximum PWM is 450. But this is what I had to do to find this out because I want to set my, all my servos, I want to set them up in the midpoint of this 100 to 450 um, and then work out the closed and open part within the main um, code that I'm going to be using with the JMRI. So it's quite a basic thing to do, it takes a bit of time, that's the only thing. You have to keep uploading code, it's like this. And all it's going to do is read the character coming in from your serial monitor of either a character of C for me to be closed and a character T for threat turnout. If it's a C, it's going to write the 100 to the turnout and if it's a T, it's going to write 270 to the turnout. So let's show you it in, in practice. So over here, I've also, uh, you might notice as well, I've got um, the writing coming in through here which are the serial outputs that I wrote in here so I know what, that it's working and what, what, what's happening. So if I like write C, I don't know what, it's, what position it's in at the moment. All right, so you can see as it turn out, it's turned and if I put a T in, it's turned back to where it was at the beginning. And so what I would normally do now is go through here at probably about 30 at a time. So I'll do a 300, not 3000. Up, upload um, this part of the code So that upload's done now. And now if I click the C would be basically going back to where I was before. But a T now should be a lot further than it was. And you can see the turnout was vertical and it's now coming further around. Um, and I'm not going to go through it all, but I would have gone 320 now, 330, 360 and gone up until I get to the point where I'm near the limit, um, which would be the 450. So I'll take it to 4, 420 so you can see, see where it is. 
what you've got to be careful of when you get near the limit is if you keep going massively over, the turnout will judder and it would seem like it's moved, but it hasn't actually moved. So um, you can you need to take it up slowly a bit at a time and then back it off to make sure the actual turnout's moving. Otherwise, you're pushing your limit of your servo to the point of um, it destroy the servo. So I'll click the um, T now straight away, and you see the servo up here. You see it move. And that's the maximum almost mine goes to. But I know now roughly mine is between 100 and 450. So I start my close circuit off at about 250. And then I work on the throw um, either higher or lower of that 250 when I do the setup for the actual JMRI, which I'll be doing um, fairly soon. All right, so the next thing is setting it up now with JMRI. This is my main JMRI code, which most of you have seen. It's all the same at the top, it's the same on the web page. Um, I've got a number of um, turnouts working now um, and this is the if statements that control them and I'm working on this one where we get bit, bit 4 comes in which controls the turnout you saw in the video just a minute ago and so JMI is always giving out a bit of zero when it starts up well mine does so um, they should all do the same um, when you've got your turn the table set up so because it's giving out a bit zero all the time I'm using that <coughs> sorry, to set up my turnouts to be in the closed position on startup, so I know the position of all the turnouts for my layout. So because it's bit, um, because it's doing that at bit zero, and this is the closed one, I'm going to set this to 250, which is what I'm going to use my setup for the turnout to be closed. I set that one at 270 just for now to see a throw uh, movement, and we'll upload that side of the code. bring up the picture of the turnout right so the turnout now is sitting in this position here which should be not now my closed I'd make when I connect up my main arm in a minute I'd make sure that the turnout is in the closed position when it's connected up to this servo there might be slight adjustments because sometimes it doesn't actually fit on the cog and you might have to change that 250 to 255 or 245 so so on to get it to work but for now that's 250 and 270 and if I bring up the table and this is a turnout that we're going to be operating and if I operate this and keep an eye on the turnout you can see it's moving to the um, in a anti-clockwise direction which is going to be in the wrong direction for my turnout because it's currently in the closed position and it needs to go in the clockwise direction so I now know before we even connect this up that on number 4 270 is the wrong way I'll have to be going to more likely to 240 and this is important to do this before you connect it up so that you don't damage your turnout. Right, give that another go. And it's slight movement, not much, but you can see it's going the right way. So I'm now going to connect up my turnout, see if it actually fits on it, that cog, with um, it in the closed position. And that fitted on quite nicely. There's a slight buzz. We'll work out the um, if I'm too far over, pushing too far or not in a minute. Right, so with that done, I'll just bring up the turnout again. I'll operate the turnout and see if it moves. No, it's not enough. Didn't think it would be. Number four. So we're at 240 at the moment. So I'm going to bring that to 220 and we'll give that a go. That moves nicely. There's a lot of buzzing when I'm over there, um, but it's not actually pushing the point too hard, but there's buzzing which I don't like. So I'm going to bring that down a bit. So we bring this to 2, I'll try to 230. Might be not, might have to go a bit higher, but. Yeah, it's not enough. 
if you notice, I don't know if you can see in the video, there's a slight gap, about a millimetre gap here. But it should probably be fine. The, the train will probably come along and it won't derail because it's there's a um, there's also a piece of metal on these rails which sticks out further to make sure that it pushes these onto these um, blades. So it probably work fine. You definitely won't get any electrical connection here, and that's the problem with doing not doing a relay system. Um, but it doesn't put no stress on the, the servos by doing it this way. Um, if it doesn't derail the train, then you might get away with it, and it, like I say, it probably makes your servos last longer. But it might be a problem with derailing some of the small wagons. So I'll bring it over to. It was 220. We go to 225 and that and I'm going to bring this down as well just by one at the moment because there's a buzz on that right that's perfect now that's pulling over right onto the running rail blade, there's no buzzing coming from it, it's a, it's a quite nice setup. So the next thing set up is connecting up this piece of wire, um, running the cable back to my relay bank, which I'm going to do now, and then I'll show you this setup um, with the relays connected up to liven up this um, part as well. So now I've got the turnout in place, which has got the solder connections, and underneath he's got the little tiny cutout bits taken out, the little tiny links. Um, so now these blades should be permanently um, connected to the running rail of their associated side um, so I'm just going to test it to show you it working so if I connect my crocodile clip on this running rail here and my at the moment it's on a buzzer so it will buzz when it's made continuity and if I connect it onto this blade and this part you can see it's making continuity even though the turnout hasn't actually turned over and touching this side um, and in this side it's not getting no continuity so I've got no dead short at all and there's nothing on these parts because at the moment I haven't connected up the electrical connection for the um, relay which is going to be controlled by the Arduino and same for this side which will be my negative side yep I'm getting continuity no short on there continuity and the turnouts over this side if I move the turnout over my blade's still getting that negative voltage it works pretty well right so now you have the, the live frog here and this part here which is connected together is electrically connected through a hole here back to the Arduino relay bank which I showed you earlier and so to test that I haven't got any shorts I've got my crocodile clip set up on this running rail which is going to be my positive running rail um, and you can see I'm getting continuity across there and across the live part of the blades here which we did earlier on but now I've also got continuity here on this um, frog because it's been made positive by the relay bank and so when I do the Arduino code which will be my next thing will be to say that when this turnout moves over to here that it changes this polarity to a negative um, and so we don't get shorts but it changes polarity depending on where this um, turnout has been switched to so that will be the next thing I'll go into the Arduino code and show you that right so the relay codes now connected up I'll just go through the code um, so I'll show you it working and then I'll go through the code so you can put it there. So going back to what I was doing earlier, I'm on the positive running rail and I'm going to connect my flute meter up to this fog here which is being powered by the relay from the Arduino. So you're going to get a continuous buzz. And then when I operate the turnout over here, the relay's clicked, the turnout's moved over and the buzzing stops and as you can see now it's, it's turned over to the negative side so it's working exactly how it should be working and so just to show you on the relay I'll just bring this camera over so hopefully it works So as you can see in the corner here in the relay, there's a little LED light just glowing away. This is number five of my LEDs, um, which is connected to pin 49, I think it is. Yep, 49 on the Arduino pins, which are coming out here, these yellow ones. Um, and it's lit up at the moment to show you it's been operated. And if I operate this turnout now, it's gone off. 
and it, there you go, it comes back on again. So the relay works in unison with the turnout turning on or off. So now looking at the Arduino code, it's quite basic stuff to set this bit up. Um, I've got a couple already set up, which I was going to show you in a minute. But basically, the first thing you need to do is set up uh, the pin that you're going to be using, whatever pin you decide to use from your Arduino, going into your relay bank. Mine was going to be 49. Um, and I've given it a, a name, and I've given it the name of the turnout which I've given on my layout, underscore relay, so I know that I'm controlling the relay in this part. And then we have to set the pin mode to output for the Arduino to know that this is a pin is going to be a digital output. And then I write my relays high, which you've seen in my previous videos, to make sure that relays are off on startup so that I am in the right state. Everything's correct then on startup. Um, going down to my if function for number four, which is this TBUS, which is the turnout we're working on, in the state where the I'll do, um, the JMR is given a zero out, which is my closed state. I'm going to make sure that digital write the relay is still high, so it means it's going to be off. And then if I operate it to throw the relay, I'm going to digital write the relay to be low, which turns the relay on, um, changing the state of the relay basically. And then vice versa, when we close the, um, the turnout, the relay will go um, turn off with this piece of code here. And that's basically it. This controls the relay to, for the polarity of the um, live frogs, and all the relay, all the, all the, the turnouts are controlled. The only issue I am having, particularly on this turnout with this um, servo, is this number. These numbers, I've two four nine allows the turnout to move over to the running rail, the the um, the blades. Um, but and they're touching the running rail and if I back it off any more than 249 it doesn't actually touch the running rail and any more than 249 it's pushing too hard but with this 249 no matter what figure I put on this I have a buzzing coming from the turnout until I have operated them on and off a couple of times so this might be down to really poor really cheap servos that I probably bought um, or maybe there is a way if anyone knows that when you've set the um, when you set the servo to 249 whether we can turn off the power to the servo so we're not getting any buzzing so it'd be nice to be able to turn servo powers on and off so that we can turn it on power on set it to whatever figure we want and then turn it off again so i'm going to look into and have a play with because that would make life much easier it um, preserve my servos a bit better or maybe i just need to spend a bit more money and not be so tight <laughs> right so last thing i was going to show you was it is with JMRI as well part is the two turnouts that I've got going across the crossover. I'll just show you this one here, which is a, a turnout here that goes onto a crossover which has got live um, frogs on the crossover as well and then corresponds onto this turnout up here at the back, which you might just about see at the top of the camera. Um, so both of the turnouts at the moment, they're in, this is in the closed position so that to, for the tra train to go down that way. And this is in a throw position for the train to come down this line here. And so at the moment, there's polarity for this one because this has got uh, this is my positive rail. Um, then this t uh, fog will be positive, so it's isolated from this part here, which would be my normally my negative coming down. So that's one thing. But this works exactly the same as the turnout that I was showing earlier. The only difference really is that this fog here, when I operate the, this turnout over to here. Um, and this becomes positive, uh, negative. Sorry, this rail here is my positive line. I make this positive. Now I can't connect this to this one because this one's negative. So what I do is there's a little tiny wire in the back of this, and I connect this one to this frog up here, which is a positive one. And then vice versa, I connect this one, which needs to be negative, to this one because this one's negative. So hopefully that makes sense. But you do need, if you're using these live crossovers, you need to switch the polarity of these um, frogs so that they don't short out and you get a continuous flow of electricity across the whole network. Um, so that works, for this one it works quite well. But the biggest thing I need to do as well with JMRI this is, is when I operate this turnout, because I'm changing this polarity and everything else, I need to make sure really I'm turning this turnout at the same time to change all this polarity so that I don't get any shorts of any train going up or any short circuits. So I do that in JMRI, I operate both of these at the same time, I'll show you that.
So on JMRI, just get rid of this and bring up the main panel. So to control these two turnouts together, I do this on the layout side of things, set this up. I don't know whether you can do it in the table, I haven't looked into it, but it works on here. Just to show you how you set up something like this, I don't know whether you've done it before. But I need to put two turnouts, so I'll click up the on left H for left hand turnouts. Hold the shift button down and click twice to get two turnouts. Right click on one of them to rotate it by 180 degrees. Then click on track segment, hold the shift button down. If I can get it to start, there you go. Hold the shift, real help hold the shift button down up and then click, hold my click down, drag it across to where I want to join it, let go, and there you go, they're set up. And then all you do is you go in and set up the properties on here, which I won't do in this one because they're always set up down here on this one. So I highlight the whole lot, push delete on my keyboard, and that'll delete everything that I've just done. Or maybe not that one. There you go. Right, so then I click on, say, this one here, go to edit and I've called this turnout is the TBDS um, and you usually get all the turnouts on here that you've got set up in your table to select so this is one of the ones that I'm going to be controlling um, let's see if I can get both up at the same time I don't know where I can edit there no looks like I can only have one edit page up at the same time Yep, I can only have one edit page up at once. So anyway, this is the lower one, which is TBU1. Um, and then and below it, it says also tick box, also throw turnout. And I've now selected turnout TBDS, which is the other turnout. So it's quite simple enough to just put that in and click OK. I don't think I did that in this one. I think you might have done it. Yeah, it's automatically done it for me. So it says also throw that one. I can't remember if I did it or not. But it, either way, you need to tick that and then say what one you're going to be Fine. and that is it so now when I click this it's I don't know if you heard the click in the background but it's throwing both turnouts at the same time and if I bring up the and so if I bring up the table down the bottom and you see that when I operate it the throw on the table goes on both the turnouts at the same time so that's it for my turnout um, videos my next project after I've set up all my turnouts which I need still need to do and figure out whether I can stop the buzzing on some of the poxy um, servos if that's possible um, but after I've done that my next thing is going to be looking at building a turn turntable and doing all that again through Arduinos and CMRI so I hope you enjoyed watching it please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like them and I'll keep posting um, videos as and when I get them sorted